I'm Jennifer Mulligan, and my partner is Andrew Bogart, and we are doing our presentation on monoco grading monochromators. And I'm going to talk to you today about a little bit about what it is. A grading monochromator is a part of a spectrophotometer that separates different wavelengths from one another and selects a narrow band of wavelengths to pass through the sample. The reflection grading is used to disperse the light. Now, there's a picture of a spectrophotometer. And here's a picture of a grading monochromator and how it works. And Jennifer's going to explain that. Slit where it hits a concave mirror, and then that light is reflected onto the grating, which diffracts the light, um, and then it hits another concave mirror, and as it exits, it's even more diffracted, and so you can actually pass different wavelengths by adjusting the grating um, through the detector. We have one color coming in, and then it's reflected off the mirror, and then now we have like white light is coming in. Now we have all these different colors and we only have this one color coming out because it's the only one that's that wavelength. A little bit more in detail about how it works. A light source is aimed at the entrance slit. The slit is placed at the effective focus of a curved mirror, which is the collimator, um, so that the light from the slit reflected from the mirror is collimated or focused at infinity. The collimated light is diffracted from the grating and then is collected by another mirror, which refocuses the light, now dispersed on the exit slit. And at the exit slit, the colors of the light are spread out because each color arrives at a separate point in the exit slit plane. There are a series of images at, of the entrance slit focused on the plane. The entrance slit is finite in width, so parts of nearby images overlap. The light leaving the exit slit contains the entire image of the entrance slit of the selected color plus parts of the entrance slit images of nearby colors. A rotation of the dispersing element causes the band of colors to move relative to the exit slit so that the desired entrance slit image is centered on the exit slit. The range of colors leaving the exit slit is a function of the width of the slits. So if you have a wide exit slit then more colors are going to come out and relative to the width of the exit slit. And this again is just another example of the monochromator. Um, notice the grading is equally spaced. With the sawtooth. <laughs> sawtooth, yeah. There you go. We have two concave mirrors in here. So that means that it's going to be reflected twice compared to that other image that we showed, even, probably even a smaller range of wavelengths is going to come out in the exit slit. You don't have as much constructive interference if you have two concave mirrors. And we're going to talk to you about constructive interference. Uh, the distance D in between the grooves are closely spaced and parallel. When light is reflected, each groove behaves as a source of radiation. If the adjacent light rays are in phase, they reinforce one another, which leads to constructive interference. If they are out of phase, they cancel each other out. And constructive interference occurs if the difference in path length A to B traveled by the two rays is an integer multiple of the wavelength. So they were, have two different waves and then they add up to this one wave. And here is a complicated example of different, like uh, different lights, wavelengths coming into this sawtooth. It's just a big blow up of that um, okay. figure we showed earlier. And this shows you some of the angles that they reflect at. The grading equation n times lambda equals d sine theta plus sine phi. For each indecent angle of theta, there are 
construct diffraction angles phi at which a given wavelength will produce maximum constructive interference. So at certain angles, you're going to get more constructive interference than at other angles. And that's the equation for it. Uh, there are different applications for the monochromator. Um, most of them are for spectrophotometers, um, such as the automatic scanning spectrophotometer and the absorption spectrophotometer. Um, monochromators are also used in optical instruments that measure other phenomena besides simple absorption or reflection, wherever um, the color of the light is a significant variable, for example, the circular dichro dichroism. Um, they're also used in lasers, and monochromatic light allows for the measurement of the quantum efficiency of an imaging device. And here's just uh, little examples of lasers with diffraction grating. That's pretty cool. So that's mine, Andrew Bogart, and Jennifer Mulligan's presentation on monochromator grating. Thank you for your time.